So in this lecture video, we are going to explore how velocity and position can be found by integration. So what I have here is an acceleration versus time graph, and I've drawn a line that represents how the acceleration changes as a function of time. So I've drawn a line here to represent that change. However, I could have also given you a function that if you plotted it, you would end up with this line. And our goal is to be able to find the velocity at some particular time t. Now before when we looked at graphs, we looked at the slope or the first derivative. Now if we look at the slope here, we have meters per second squared divided by seconds, which gives us meters per second cubed. So that's not velocity. There's actually something called the jerk, um, and we won't really discuss that in this course. So let's try a different technique. If we notice here, if we take meters per second squared times a second, we actually get units of meters per second. So in this ca case, rather than dividing, we want to be able to multiply. And that's sort of like the equivalent of the area underneath the curve. So if we want to know what the change in velocity is between this point here and this point here, we need to multiply acceleration times time together, or we need to find the area under the curve, or the area underneath the line. Even if it's not curvy, we still refer to that area, a line as a curve. And if you were given a data plot with actual numbers on the axes, uh, the area underneath this particular line is the shape of a triangle, so you do one half base times height, using time as your base, and then your height as the acceleration. However, another way of finding the area underneath the curve is integration. So that's where the title of this video comes, Finding Velocity and Position by Integration. So what we're going to say is that the velocity at some time t is equal to the integral from t1 to t2 of your acceleration function in terms of t. So we're going to integrate in terms of the variable t. That's what this right here tells us. And the fact that this is just a dt and not like a dv over dt in the case we're integrating versus taking derivatives. Sometimes um, in physics we get a little lazy and we don't put the integration sign out front. All right, the only problem with this form is that it assumes that the velocity at time one is zero. And this is where things get a little bit fuzzy between physics and math where we're doing a definite integral because we're taking it from some time that you're provided in the problem to some final time you're provided in the problem. But you still really need an integration process, um, constant in there. So there are two ways you can think of this. I often do rewrite this in the same form and say delta v is equal to the integral from t1 to t2 of our acceleration function. Remembering then that the change of velocity is equal to v final minus v initial, and so I need to know what that initial velocity is, or the velocity at t1. The other way you can look at this is the fact that there would be an integration constant, and that integration constant would be that initial velocity. So you could rewrite this in this format. like this, where the v initial is your integration constant. So those, those are two different ways of looking at that, but you do have to remember that at t equals zero, or t initial, that may not, not be zero, your initial velocity is not necessarily zero. And this is a quick reminder that because this acceleration, and this acceleration would be some sort of function, like you could be given acceleration in terms of t, is equal to five uh, meters per second to the fourth power t squared. 
and that would be the function. It describes how your acceleration changes with time. Because the acceleration is changing with time, that means that the acceleration is changing. So you can't actually plug this value into a kinematic equation. Remember, kinematic equations assume constant acceleration. You also can't plug in some t here and get a velocity. So you, as I'm already emphasizing, if you plug in the time provided and get an acceleration out, that doesn't tell you how the velocity is going to be affected when the acceleration was some other value in the past. So this is why we have to integrate, because doing that integration takes into account how the velocity was this much, and then this much, and then this much. And it takes into account the past changes and how that affects the current state that you're looking at. All right, now we can look at a velocity versus time graph, and we can see something similar to what we saw in the earlier portion of this video. Now if we multiply velocity units times time units, we get meters or displacement. So we can use the concept of the area underneath the curve of a velocity versus time graph to find the displacement uh, between two points in time. Now I've drawn once again a linear looking line. That's just the easiest line to draw. What that line actually looks like will be based upon the function that is used to describe the particular motion of the object. All right, and remember area underneath the curve is the same thing as taking an integral. So your position as a function of time is going to equal the integral from time one to time two of velocity in terms of time. And we're going to take our integral in terms of time. Once again, you have to remember that your position may not be zero at t1, which means that once again, you have the two options. You can look at it as an actual displacement is equal to integral of t1, t2. Or you can look at it in terms of your final position is equal to the integral from t1 to t2 of your velocity function. And then remember you have the integration um, constant that is essentially the same as your initial position.